Hello everybody, good afternoon and welcome to Canny Commuting, the webinar series that makes it easier for people to walk, cycle, wheel and get public transport to work and for work. Canny Commuting is brought to you by My Journey Hampshire in association with Sustrans and is funded by National Highways. So welcome to episode 11 of Canny Commuting and today we are talking all about how to make sure your cycle is safe and to make sure it's secure. To introduce myself, I am Andy. I am your Canny Commuter in Chief for this whole series. And I have been active travel commuting in the south of England for about the last 15 years. And I've been doing it up and down the country for many years before that. And I'd like to think of myself as a little bit of an expert. But you're going to get plenty of my voice today. So instead of that, I'm going to introduce you to our other Canny Commuter in just a moment. And that is Ray. Ray, if you could unmute yourself and introduce yourself to the rest of the gang, that would be absolutely amazing. Fantastic. Good afternoon, Andy. Good afternoon, everybody on the call. Um, can you hear me all right, Andy? We can indeed hear you okay. Fantastic. Yes, my name is Ray. I work for Sustrans. I work with the My Journey team. Um, I mainly work with schools, Andy, and getting the families and people out commuting and helping them to cycle a bit better. So I'm looking forward to running through some checks to think about when you get your bike out and ready to roll. Fabulous. Thank you very much, Ray. So today, as I say, we are going to be talking all about how to make sure your cycle is safe when you get it out of the shed. And we're going to be talking about how to make sure that it is still there when you come back. Excellent. So, Ray, you are now pinned to my screen and you are completely live. So if you could talk to us about how to make sure your cycle is safe and later on secure. That is absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Oh, OK. Thanks, Andy. Well, um, I don't know, should we have a little vote? Um, Amber, I don't know if you're on there, but should we have a little vote? Has anyone heard of an M check? Maybe put in the chat um, whether you've heard of an M check or whether you've heard of an ABC check. Three, two, one, let's go. Flying through. What you thought of an M check? A mechanical check, an M check. One no. So far, who knows? No, that's good. Got some no's coming through. Thank you. That's brilliant. Great stuff. Well, so you might be thinking, um, actually, I haven't ridden my bike for a while. Don't know why you haven't ridden your bike for a while, but of course, hopefully you will after this. And you want to make sure that your bike is nice and safe to ride. Okay. And maybe also we'll throw in a few little performance tips to help you along as well. So an M check is very handy because the bike is made up, of course, of a couple of triangles, and you've got a nice M shape down the bottom there. So it follows the route of the frame. And it's a really good thing. Um, I do a lot of bike doctors and things like that, where I'm working on a lot of bikes. And sometimes I'll be working on lots of bikes and I might forget something. So it's a good kind of methodical way of checking what's going on and I haven't missed anything. I generally always start at the front, okay? So I'm gonna go around the front first of all, and I'm gonna talk about Airing your tyres. Now, of course, a quick rule of thumb, and of course I work with children, all right, so the sort of things I say to them is as hard as an apple. So if you're not sure how much air to put in, hard as an apple is a great little guideline. On the tyre, though, it will give you, it's quite hard to read sometimes, a PSI, pounds per square inch. That tells you normally a range something like 40 to 65 on most sort of bikes like this. This is a hybrid bike and my work bike. So make sure you've got lots of air in there. Um, obviously, it'll help speed you up a little bit and you avoid punches as well if you get that right. So we start around the front, I've got my hair in the tyres. Um, I've done run my hand around the spokes. I just check I've got no spokes missing or any loose spokes. And that will be something that will need fixing. Um, I've got some little spoke reflectors on there as well. You might see them flashing around a little bit in the room. I just leave them on all year, they're great, so that, you know, traffic can see from the side when it's a bit dark or dusty. Um, then I will also make sure, this is very important, just hook it up there, that my wheel is in nice and tight. So you might have a bike that's got normal bolts, normally 15 millimeter bolts, so you need to get your spanner on there, check they're nice and tight. If you have this gadget, it's called a quick release. And the quick release main thing is, make sure that it's locked in fully. 
Okay, um, I like to put it in this position because it's out of the way of catching on anything, but make sure it's nice and tight. That's what's really important. So I've got enough air, my spokes are all right, my wheel's looking good. I'm going to go around the front of my bike. I'm going to check my steering is nice and tight here. Okay, this is the headset and the stem. So I grip the tire in between the knees and my feet. I give the steering a good nudge, and I don't want that to be moving because if it does, I know I might have problems with this, and that needs tightening up. Okay, brilliant. Now, the other things I look for around the front sometimes you might hold bells with bits that are a bit spiky, you know, hopefully, you won't have a little tumble. But if you did, you don't want to hit anything on here, so I'll make sure that's all nice on there. And of course, one very important thing is the brake. So I will roll my bike forward and I just apply my front brake. Make sure the back comes up really instantly. Now I'm lucky I've got hydraulic brakes here and they're set up quite nice. And then I'm going to roll the bike back. Whoop, and make sure that that comes up. So what you're looking for is kind of instant grab. If I go a little bit nearer to the screen, you'll see that what we don't want is the brake lever going all the way back to the grip. You'll notice as well, when you get a little bit more confident on your bike, you might want to think about using one finger or two at the most. All right, that allows you better grip and handling on your handle brakes. Okay, just a little thing actually to throw in. I've got some nice ergo grips on mine, and it just means that it's a bit more comfortable on my wrists. But when I am sat on the bike, I've got pretty much a nice straight line all the way to my shoulder. That's very important all the way to the brake. Okay, so we're getting the ergonomics right. Now back to the end check. The mechanical end check, I've checked the front, I've checked my brakes, the grips are nice and tight, they're fine. So I'm going to follow now down to the crank and the pedals down here. I'm going to check that my pedals are spinning freely. We don't want any friction. Um, just to throw in there, contact points of a bike. So you've got these three contact points. That's going to be the grips, the saddle, and your pedals. Now those three, you might want to think about customizing them and making them a bit nicer, more comfortable. Um, we've certainly done some videos in the past where we've talked about different saddle types and all sorts. What I would say, one important thing, this time of year, of course, it's nice and dry, the pedals are very grippy. But when it does get a little bit wet and damp out there, of course it can come in, make sure your pedals are nice and grippy. They're definitely worth sometimes swapping them for a, another pair because you might be stood up one day going up a hill, and there's nothing worse than your foot slipping off the pedal. Okay, M check up, down. I'm happy with that. I'm going to come up to my saddle now, give it a little pull around. Does it go forward? Does it go up? That's good. And just a little tip just to throw in there. Let me see if I can do it in this room. So to measure your saddle height. I put my heel, my heel but on the pedal, right at the bottom of the pedal stroke, sit on the saddle, and you should have almost a straight leg right up to your hip. Okay, that's kind of how to set your pack here, your, your saddle height. All right, nearly done with the end check. Up we go, down, up, back down here. Gonna check my tire, check my crate releases in tight. Have a little look around. Is there anything else? I've got a rack on mine. Does it need the bolts? Do they need tightening a little bit? Seems all right. I've checked my spokes. Looking good. Okay. So that is an M check in a nutshell. Have we got any questions coming about checking your bike at the moment? We're all right. Have we haven't. If you crack on with with doing the uh, with with doing the, the lock-in and security and we'll come back to questions Brilliant. afterwards okay so i'm putting a bike there now obviously i haven't got a lap post or i haven't got a bike rack to lock it to today but we're going to talk about what i see is probably one of the best ways of locking your bike now you can get cable locks that kind of use this material and to be honest they're good as a deterrent, they're better than nothing, but I know that in my tool kit, and you know, I'm, I'm not a bike thief, I could, chop, I could chop through one of these very quickly in seconds, all right? So I would say, think about investing in a proper D-lock, sometimes they get called U-locks, D-locks. I quite like combination ones, 
because if I get myself some keys, my keys can go missing. Like that. So I like the combination or digits, not to go. Now, the important thing is, if I'm going to use this to its best of its ability, I'm going to lock my frame and my wheel. So what I'm going to do is find myself something to lock it to. I'm going to put my lock through the frame of the bike and also through the wheel. So I've got myself, uh, the frame is locked, the wheel is locked, and my only thing that I haven't locked at the moment is the front wheel. So I could leave it like that. And most of the time, if there were any bike things around, they'll look at that and say, you know what, it's not worth the trouble, we'll leave that one alone. So that is one way of doing that. Then for extra security, some uh, D-locks come with a cable. I'm going to thread that through the front wheel and loop it round, and I hook it back down into my D-lock, fish bosh, I'm all locked up. So not only have I got the back locked, you can hardly move it, I've got the front lock. And then what I do as well, these big locks do really come with a carrying stand. So they fit into the frame there. And what I do though, I put it nice and safe on the back here, so I can carry it. It doesn't get in the way. Sometimes I put it in my rucksack or in my pannier. The important thing is not to put it on the front, on your handlebars, right guys? Because it can get caught in your freight cable, it can cause all sorts of trouble. Okay, so just a little tip there on locking your bike. Easy peasy. Have we got anything coming through that people would like to know about or any of the things I've talked about so far? Okay, Ray. Um, we, we've we've got a couple come through. Um, I'm just going to make sure that you are pinned so people so I can see both of us on the video. Um, you talked a little bit. Is there anything that you would do differently when setting your when checking your bike over to go out in winter rather than in the summer? Well, I suppose there are a few little mechanical things I might think about. Uh, one is that I didn't mention the chain. Now the chain is not necessarily a safety thing, but of course. We don't want an orange colored chain. You'll know when the chain, but it makes you hear someone going past and there's that horrible, you hear that, that noise. The chain is crying out for a bit of oil. Um, there are different the, types the, of oil. They sound like a bag of spanners. Bag of spanners. Um, and I have some dry lube and some wet lube. So some is for the winter, some is for the summer. I'll swap those around a little bit. Main thing is though, a little bit of oil. And then I get myself a paper towel and I take the remainder of the oil off so I don't get lots of gunk from the road stuck to the chain. That's important. I might think about the tyres, Andy. I might even in the winter, you know, I might lower the pressures down because it gives me a little bit more grip on the roads. Um, you know, when it's wet or you're on like off camber kind of things when you're riding. So those are the sort of things I might think about. Um, I might even give myself a little cover and put a little bag over it, you know, so it doesn't get too wet and it doesn't rust. So those sort of considerations, I think, are the main yeah. ones. Definitely the pedals I mentioned earlier, grippy pedals, definitely. Nice contact points. <laughs> Fab. Um, another one that's come through is, so you talked about all these checks. Are there any spares that you keep ready for in case something you know you, you kind of go in and you see the you go in to get your bike out of the shed and you do this check and something isn't working are there any spares that you keep ready for when that happens definitely yeah. I mean, i'm lucky enough that i do have tools and spares with the uh, work that i do but the things i've just sort of got out of my bag that i'll definitely carry i'll definitely carry my multi-tool everywhere i'll have myself a spare in a tube sometimes what i'll do is i'll put this um take it out of the box, and I'll actually attach it to the frame of the bike. Yep. So I've always got that on the bike. I'm never going to forget it. So if I get a puncture, I'm ready with that. Uh, a couple of tire levers. Yep. And I would say, you know, puncture repairs is another subject, but yep. have a practice when you've not got a puncture, you know, in the garden, get the wheel out, have a go yourself, put the inner tube back in. But they're the sort of things I carry yep. most of the time. Uh, I was going to say, yeah. 
If you take nothing away from today apart from this, practice fixing it when you don't have to, not when you're by the side of the road. Um, so, so I carry this on my bike, which is a, a water bottle that goes on my bottle rack, and it's got a spare tube and a multi-tool Brilliant. and some tire Brilliant. levers and a pair of gloves in it. So, so, so I, I literally can't forget them, whatever I do, because they're just on the bike the whole time. Um, yes. I do have a quick question from the chat. Um, can a can of WD-40 um, be good for seized cables? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so if you haven't got the, ideally, you've got a rusty cable, you know, a broken cable generally, and what happens is after time, you know, the rust gets in and then the brakes don't spring back into action how they should, then what you can do is you get, especially WD-40, it's got usually a little bit of tube on the end. You can take your outer of the inner tube away, put a little bit of oil, squirt it in there, um, and then run the cable in and out, and that can normally get your cable working again in and out. But WD-40, yeah, that's fine. GT-40, those kind of things are great. Um, obviously, these days, there's some really good uh, biodegradable oils out there. Make sure you go down that route. And then another one, is there anything I can do to increase the chances of getting my bike back if it does get stolen? Okay. There are, I mean, there are trackers. If you have yourself an expensive bike, there are ways, there are gadgets that you can put into your seat post that are hidden. Um, I would say, make sure you get your serial number off your bike. So on the base of the bike, whoop, down here somewhere, You'll have a series of letters and numbers that's definitely worth logging. Um, there are organizations that you can log that with, um, police organizations. But you know what? It is about avoiding it in the first place. Uh, but you will definitely have more chance of recovering it if you've got those details. Take some pictures of it as well, really good, clear pictures. Um, and there is the locking side of it, but I would say. There are times where I've rocked up at a shop or something and I'm like, oh, I haven't got my lock with me. That's quite a big deal. Just be open with people and say, would you mind, you know, someone who works in the, on the front of the door, would you mind looking after my bike while I pop in? And generally people are fine. I've actually found that shops, um, you know, I went m the other day or so on, they were quite happy for me to almost ride around the shop. You know, they're okay. Just leave it at the front door and make sure someone's got an eye on it. Um, um Another question that, that, that we had for, from before the session was, is there anything that you look for in a lock? Because you know, I know not all D locks are the same. Is there any way that people can make sure they're getting a lock that's secure enough and enough of a deterrent for them? Yeah, sure. I mean, they're, um, I think they're called gold standard locks and on there. I mean, Mike, this range here on guard, most, most stores you go to are going to be selling um, you know, quality locks and on them, they usually have a gold standard, um, one to five, and five being the highest. And it really depends on what you know, the price of your bike. I've heard I've heard people say, Andy, spend 10% on a lock um, against the price of your bike. If you've got a thousand pound bike, you know, it's worth at least spending a hundred pounds. But really, um, a good lock like that, 40 pounds, something like that, definitely worth it. And combination lock, to say, I think it's the way to go. Yeah. Um, as someone who is terribly forgetful, combination locks are the absolute worst thing in the world. I, I struggle to remember my own PIN number and my own name a lot of the time, let alone a four-digit number. So I, so I swear by keys on my lock because it means I've got a yeah, physical yeah. thing that I need to – that, that I cannot lose. But it, but it's a, it's it's very much a personal preference thing because the the mechanics yeah. of the lock are very similar. So there's 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 three standards. There's there's bronze sold secure, silver sold secure, and gold sold secure. And essentially, it's down to some someone has done a, a test somewhere about how quickly you can get through them with an angle grinder or a set of hydraulic cutters. So the 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 further up that spectrum you go, the more secure that lock is. Um, the other one that I've heard is is always put your lock your bike up somewhere that people can see, because you know, yeah, th there is there is a deterrent of people watching it. Whereas if you lock it up around the back of something, then then someone who who, who has it in their mind to nick your bike yeah, has time to, to to kneel down and do that. 
yeah, sometimes I only want to see CCTV cameras around, you know, look for one of those um, well lit areas. Yep. So yeah. I just have one more question in the chat. Um, some bikes now have wheel locks on the frame. How effective are they? And is it worth looking for a bike with one of these? Um, I was the... actually going to suggest that yeah, we ask Amber this question. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, double up, I would always say. It, I mean, it's always better benefit to have one on the front and also your D-lock, but I wouldn't say just the one on the front. I'd still advise to have the D-lock. Yeah, so, so, so a wheel lock is really good for stopping someone just walking off with it. And it's really quick to use, which makes it convenient and is stuck to your bike. But I would suggest that if you're leaving the bike unattended at any time, make sure it's it's attached to something that doesn't move. Yeah, because definitely. if if your bike is pickable up, then someone can pick it up. There's a question also, and I'm not um, I might as well mention it anyway that you, you can get locking wheel bolts, right? I don't know if we're talking about locking wheel yeah. bolts or not. We um, can do. But they you can get those. You don't have a quick release or a normal bolt. But to be honest, they they usually are you they're usually an Allen key release system. So someone with the right tool can just kind of whip them off. That's my understanding anyway. So um, but yeah, if you follow some of these guidelines on locking to the D lock, you'd be absolutely fine. Ace, excellent. Um there was another question I was going to ask and it's completely oh, gone from question I should I have. We haven't had a helmet question today. Go on, Ray. Show us how. how uh, show, well, show us, no, show us something not, about we're helmets. Talking about, you know, we're talking about safety. Just if you are going to yep. wear your helmet, whether you wear one or not, just make sure it fits well. Um, inside, you've got a manufacturing date, and normally I'll tell you if it's out of date with if more than three years, um, it's really worth thinking about getting a new helmet, a new lid. So just make sure, guys, it's really easy to put on quick. A couple of fingers in there. Don't be twiddly bit. A good fitting helmet will stay on even if you forget to do these up, all right? So that's when you try one on, give it a go. Excellent. Um, do you have, in terms of so, so someone was asking me the other day about how to secure a bike when, when it's at home. So not when you're out at the shops, but but to, to, so when it's when it's at home, how you make sure that, that that's safe yeah, and secure? Right. Great question. Well, um, I won't go into my security setup at home, but Probably I will tell you some, someone would have a challenge. But the one thing I think, Andy, the best thing you can get is a ground anchor. A ground anchor is, if you're not sure what that is, it's kind of a piece of metal, like a metal hoop. And you secure that to the brick wall of your garage or your base or floor. A lot of motorbike users use them. And the bolts that go into it, um, you can't take them out. Once they're in, you put a little um, ball bearing in and you whack it in, and very hard to get out. It just means that if you've got a few bikes as a family, then you can just loop them together. Um, I've got a couple of D locks. I loop, if I say I've got three bikes, I'll loop two D locks together. I just make it very difficult for someone to have a go at those. Cool. Um, but yeah, ground anchors are very good. Yep. It's worth saying. Well, sorry, yep. sorry yep. Andy, a security no, line. No, a good old deterrent as well. You know, the ones that go on when you walk past, they're really good. Yep. Cool. It's worth saying at this point that if you've got your cycles insured, your insurance will lay down what they expect of you and, and 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 i know this sounds really obvious but do what they say because it means that if the worst does happen they are more likely to pay out so if they make strictures on what kind of lock you need to have just give that a wee look and if they have stuff about where you need to have your bike stored at home make sure that what you're doing is compliant with that because there is nothing more infuriating and trust me it's happened to me in the past than when you go to claim on their insurance they go Nah, sorry. Um, so, so just just check that out. Yeah. But finally, sorry. but yeah, we we are we are almost out of time. So, so when you're taking, if tell you what, Ray, if if people take one thing away from today in terms of making sure their bike is secure when they leave the house, what or, or safe when they leave the house, what what one tip would you like people to remember? <laughs> um, 
I would say, remember to ride your bike all the time and then you don't have to stop and lock it up. No, that's ride it as much as you can, as many journeys as you can. Um, look, I think for me, I've got, obviously I use my bike a lot. I'll go up to the post office and I've got my favorite locking spot. You know, I know where it's secure. I know the D-lock will fit it. We don't always find nice, um, what we call Cambridge stands where you can, you know, put your bike and things like that. I would say just carry a D-lock with you um, and just be really mindful of where you're putting it um, and just be sensible with it. And actually, Andy, the, you know, I, when I hear of any bikes that are stolen, I have most of the time asked people, what did you secure it with? And generally, it's because it had a uh, cable lock on it. I had a colleague who was misfortunate with their bike um, and it was a cable lock and they chopped through it really quick and off they went. So it's a good investment. It doesn't have to be a massive D lock either, a smaller one. Yep. Um, but yeah, yep. I think that's maybe the main thing. Excellent. Um, I think in terms of making sure that your bike works when you take it out the shed, this sounds like a really daft tip, but but my one tip that I've learned the hard way is make sure it works when you put it away. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, if there is something that is niggling you about the bike when you're on it, sort that before you put it away for any length of time, because that's only going to get worse. Whereas if you ever, if, if it's in good working order when you put it away, assuming you don't store it, I don't know, under a water butt or something where there's where there's salt water running across it, there's a really good chance it will be fine when you come back to it. But if you store it with gears that don't quite align properly or brakes, oh, yeah. I can get another couple of rides out of these brake pads. Murphy's law says that that will be knackered when you come back to it and want to use it in a hurry. So, so it, it sounds really tedious, but make sure it works when you put it away, I think is, is a really good tip. Yeah, and just to chuck in there quick on that, yeah. that, I know one little funny habit I do is I'll go in my garage. I'm not necessarily going to use the bike that day, but I'm getting something else out. I'll just quickly go over, have the tyres still got their air in them, because there's nothing worse, is there? You're in a hurry to use it. Um, and we've got to sort of pump them up, we've got a puncture. So I do go down after a while, especially in the heat as well. So yeah, just little bits like that. Are you ready to yeah. roll? That's what it's about. I yeah, I know when I go into the shed, even if I'm just getting the lawnmower out, I give all the brake levers a little ping just to just to make sure they still <laughs> work properly. It's really, really sad. That is just about all we've got time for today. Can I thank everyone who's come along and asked us some questions? That's been absolutely brilliant. I would also like to thank Ray for giving up um, his lunchtime and, and his expertise for us today. Can you also give Amber, who does all the really hard work behind the scenes, a massive round of applause because she makes this happen. Without, without her, this really wouldn't happen. And just to remind you that Canny Commuting is a My Journey Hampshire production in association with Sustrans and is funded by National Highways. If you would like to get hold of me or talk to me after the session, I am often found on Twitter at Sustrans Andy. Um, Ray, are you happy for people to get hold of you on socials and ask you questions? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I guess the best way to get hold of me, Andy, would be on Twitter, actually, at Bike It Ray. That bike it Ray, you'll see me on there. Yeah. Please get in contact if you have any questions or in, in general about bikes or bike skills or route planning, by all means. Super. And we are back here next week at the same time when we are going to be talking about daisy chaining journeys. So it's going to be all around how you can do multiple jobs on one walk cycle or public transport to make it easy for you to do those things rather than have to do a separate trip for each. We will see you all next time. Thank you very much for coming. Thanks, everyone. Keep on rolling. <laughs>